Oh boy, we're gonna have a swell time tonight. Winner, winner, sheen dinner. Hello, welcome back to The Boring Revolution, a number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Hope you are all well. So, The Boring Company has another project under its belt, which we are going to coin as the Cyber Tunnel. Uh, that is its intended use case. It will be transporting used, uh, recently manufactured uh, uh, cyber trucks from Giga Texas to the other side of the highway where they are put into storage and then later shipped to customers and presumably dealerships as well. And uh, yeah, so the project was um, certainly mostly successful. There were some um, elements that didn't quite go to plan, but that is always the case when it comes to tunneling or mining, if you are familiar with this uh, sector. So um, the tunnel was the first commercial project that the Boeing company has undertaken in the great state of Texas. And we can all be very proud of that particular project. Um, the, the actual uh, machine itself is definitely a work in progress. It is definitely going through continuous improvements in terms of its... Uh, uh, manufacturing and, and it's kind of R&D uh, cycle. Uh, you could also use the phrase iterative design. I prefer continuous improvement, um, but uh, but hey. Um, so it, in terms of actually setting up and calibrating the machine, it was a very, very long process, but you've got to remember that this is the first time that this team has uh, worked on a major project in this state and they're working on this machine for the first time, there are quite a few differences between this machine and Proofrock 2. Uh, the vast majority of the components inside it are now manufactured via the Boeing Company, uh, Boeing Company's designs, and actually manufactured via the Boeing Company at its facility in Bastrop. So, in in, in, ter in terms of getting all those components married up and working in unison, that is quite a process and has never been done before. So ultimately. Um, you, you're kind of learning on the job as it were um, actually operating the machine took them a good two to three weeks to kind of get into the swing of it uh, and then after that we, we saw really really good progress um, and by week five and week six they were definitely uh, making excellent progress underneath the highway and then further on into the factory um, it was the first tunnel as well constructed under a highway, which in itself is a difficult pro, uh, process. You've got to give credit to the team for doing this flawlessly. There was no evidence of subsidence. Uh, I've looked at that highway in great detail and there is zero evidence. So uh, the, the actual quality of the work that they're doing is definitely up there with the best in the industry. So considering they're working with a brand new machine, that in itself is a massive, massive achievement. Uh, congratulations to the team. I'm sure there's a few more people other than what we see here, but they've all done a fantastic job on this particular project. First project using Proofrock 3. As you can imagine, uh, that was difficult in itself. However, it is worth noting that this particular machine will probably uh, only operate on one more project before it is eventually um, terminated and we go on to Proofrock 4 later this year and Proofrock 5 next year. Um, this will be a very, very uh, continuous process of working uh, through problems with the various machines and making uh, design, design changes. And I think that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> by the time we get to um, Proofrock 6 and Proofrock 7, that is when we will start to see uh, well over 100 meters per day. And we may end up at proof rock nine, maybe even proof rock 10 before we see the finished uh, machine. Same goes uh, with, with SpaceX and, and, and uh, 
uh, Starship, if you if you follow the uh, the manufacturing process of the various versions of Starship, you, you'll notice that the, the, they seem to make hundreds of design changes every time they manufacture a new component, and uh, that translates into a much better product. And it's very much the same that's going on here. Um, one thing that I will always do on this channel, and I'll tell you this straight, is I will always tell you. Um, what are the key things that they're changing with a particular TBM? I'm not just going to talk about very kind of um, generic things and it'll do this, it'll do that. I'm going to talk about the specific component that is being changed because that is key to understanding how this TBM is going to massively um, improve the efficiency of tunneling. Um, I've noticed some other people talking in, in very general terms about uh, TBMs and it's just not helpful overall to understanding what the Boeing company is doing it, it, it's a very kind of basic kind of teenager kind of style um, simplicity kind of explaining sort of way of doing it and it's not how we're going to operate on this particular channel first vehicle distribution tunnel as well for te Tesla and I anticipate that that we will see a few more projects like this from Tesla the reason being they're often building uh, opposite major highways and uh, if they've got plots of land on either side of the highway, they need reliable, quick, you know, um, uh, straight as an arrow uh, transport options uh, for their vehicles. And I think that will make a lot of sense. Um, OK, so we, we've had our breakthrough. Uh, I'm going to put my hand up here and say that I um, uh, made a, a prediction that was not entirely accurate i thought that the tbm was going to break through on the other side of the uh, the factory the reason being that this is a very very heavy piece of equipment and trying to extract it uh, through the factory would be horrendously difficult um, however i wasn't aware of some new technology that the boeing company has developed and uh, in hindsight if i had known about known sorry known about that particular piece of uh, technology uh, then I would have made a different prediction. Um, I think I said at one point it was around 700 foot from the edge of the highway and it, it kind of finished in that area there. So I wasn't off by too much, uh, maybe, you know, 60, 70 feet. Um, but yeah, this is this is the finishing point here. As you can see, it, it, it's gone uh, poor poising through the, uh, uh, the, the ground floor of the, the factory here. And... Um, very very simple effective process there's no need for any additional equipment to do this uh, the machine basically projects itself out of the ground and this is absolutely genius as i've said many many times before and saves you having to build a very very expensive deep shaft which you then need to hire a crane to remove the tbm from and then you need to connect that shaft to wherever the, the station is and it's a you know it, it's a lot of work this is a simple way of doing it but so the key thing that has really excited me about the um, the, the kind of uh, Proof Rock 3 is that they've it, it collaborated with this piece of equipment here. And it, the reason it works so well is that the machine obviously exits the ground at, um, at an incline. And then what you need to do, it typically, is what you would do is, is you would use a, um, a, a jib crane to, to, to move the TBM possibly in pieces onto a flat bed and then you would take it out. What this piece of equipment does called the monster, uh, it, it acts a bit like a scissor lift, but much, uh, much more power than your traditional scissor lifts that you will see on a, uh, you know, your kind of basic construction site. Um, it lifts up the entire front end of the TBM of Proof Rock. It, it, it then levels it out as well, because remember initially it's an incline so it takes it from, say, uh, an 18 degree incline to zero degrees. Then this flatbed um, heavy mover drives underneath. It drops itself down on top of that. And then the, the, the monster itself, the, the hydraulic system, uh, goes along for a ride with the TBM. So this whole thing is genius, saves you a ton of time. It means you're not messing around on site for weeks trying to trying to remove this thing, and you can potentially take it on to the next job. But if you remembered, it takes a long time to calibrate this machine. At the moment, I'm pretty confident they're working on that, and we will see um, 
kind of setup and calibration process reduced from almost a month to potentially less than uh, five to six days, hopefully. So here is some excellent shots of the uh, machine with this Cybertruck in front of it, uh, guiding the way. Here is a picture of the operator actually using the machine. Um, and this machine can be set up in a matter of hours uh, at, the, at the site. Um, and it is a massive time saver. The fact that they're using such powerful hydraulic equipment such as this using their own components uh, further reinforces my opinion that um, they will not turn back to hexagonal segments. I know that I've been banging on about this for many videos and it turns out the Boeing company has abandoned um, hexagonal segments to my dismay but there is another solution and that involves converting proof rock uh, into a, a gripper TBM and uh, that requires quite significant uh, hydraulic systems such as this here and I believe based on this design and the monster itself uh, potentially we will see a, a dramatic improvement in the overall performance of the machine because if, if they can do that with the monster imagine what they could do inside the machine by converting it into a gripper TBM this allows continuous mining in other words, they're not going to be messing around. Pausing the machine every 20 to 30 minutes. Um, th th this will dramatically improve uh, the speed of the, t the, the machine, potentially, um, by as much as 350%, potentially. Um, obviously, that's dependent on ground conditions. This particular uh, setup cannot be used in... Uh, soft ground uh, there might be a, a potentially another fix for that where you use multiple um, gripper shoes but so uh, we'll see how the board company executes on this but I'm, I'm fairly confident now that this is how they will do um, continuous mining going forward um, there was this article so if you are aware of Fred Lambert then you, you kind of know um the kind of games that he plays because he is a political operator um he's very much a guy that you know sits around inhaling his own farts and thinking they smell like roses and and, and sadly um he's become a major critic of uh, tesla and now unfortunately um the boeing company very disliked guy um real real shame really but um yeah he's got uh uh Elon Musk derangement syndrome and uh, it's quite a severe case he may never recover so uh, here's the article the Boeing company which is owned by Elon Musk announced it's digging a multi-million dollar tunnel under the Gigafactor Texas we know that um, on Monday the Boeing company announced its tunnel Boeing machine had emerged at the Tesla Gigafactory South expansion which it did in good time um, we don't really need to read much of that TBC is party to a commercial agreement with Tesla. Under these agreements, Tesla incurred expenses of approximately 0 0.2 million, approximately 1 million through February 2024. Source is familiar with the math. Doesn't seem like a lot of money, does it? It really doesn't seem like a lot of money. I mean, when you think about Tesla's got billions in the bank, um, that seems like, you know, a packet of crisps in comparison. Uh, sources familiar with the matter say that the tunnel is purely to funnel cyber talks out of the end of line to the other side of the road which is a great idea because you're not having to to you know bust them over the freeway uh, which would take another two or three minutes um, and when you're working on a, a very long production line uh, two to three minutes can make a lot of difference trust me uh, the tunnel which TBC says will be completed next month has since... So when they say completed next month, they mean installing the road deck. So you have prefabricated concrete segments um, that they drop in. And then I presume that they um, have some kind of screed that they pull on top of that. Or maybe they, they use asphalt. Um, it, it, I'm not sure how they're going to do it on this particular project. I wish they wouldn't use asphalt. I really, really would wish they wouldn't use it, but... Um, I've recently seen some plans and it looks like they might be going back to that but why 
not just use concrete, which is a much, much better material. I know it takes longer to cure, but in the long term, when it comes to maintenance and, and longevity, it, it's just um, far, far better, far, far better. You can even colour it black if you really wanted it to by adding like a pigment to it. But hey, the goal is now to autonomously send cyber trucks from one end through the tunnel and into the new staging lot. Great, so this all makes perfect sense. You've got a facility on one end of the highway that's you know, across from your Gigafactory and you've got these hundreds of cyber trucks that are being pumped out of the production line. They just need to be moved across there. So you know, there's definitely a great use case for this particular uh, tunnel in terms of saving time and also you don't need to worry about the weather you know if there's uh, adverse weather outside there's not going to be any disruption because you can just run it through the tunnel um you know what's what what's fred's problem and fred has a big problem and the problem is that everything that elon musk does everything that um anyone that works at any one of elon musk's companies does is immediately seen in a negative light uh, and he's basically basically painting it out as though Elon Musk is using uh, the Boeing company as some kind of money washing, like money laundering system to take money from a public company into a private company. And it's just a bunch of bull crap, really is. But it's, it's what you expect, sadly, from Fred, who's, who's become quite unstable really quite unstable over the last two or three years and it's it is worrying i feel sorry for his family really that he you know he lives with this condition but um here it is uh, this is fred's take not electric's take you know just replace electric with fred because fred decides you know everything that's been written on this website um no one else gets to say he is the dictator of electric uh, i'm the first to admit that there can be synergy between elon's companies but this appears to be stretching it so I, I don't even know what, how to respond to that. Um, there's clearly a use case for this tunnel. There's clearly a way to, to make it, you know, <laughs> work financially for Tesla. Uh, a multi-million dollar tunnel to get cars out of the... How, how much do you expect it to cost? Does he expect it to cost like 50 grand, 12 grand, you know, uh, 20 cents? I, 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 I really just, you know, every, you know, you, you build a swimming pool these days and it costs millions of pounds. So I have no idea what you mean to get the cars out of the EOL. Why not just design the EOL to end out of the factory into the staging area? Because there's no room for it, Fred. There's no room in that area. There's other things going on. So you have to site it in an area where you've got the space to do those things, where you've got space to expand. And that's why it's on the other side of the highway. But it's no big deal because it's a straight line in a tunnel. Now the question is, how much will this tunnel cost? As we know, it's around 4.6, 4.8 million dollars per mile. This tunnel is way under a mile. So maybe we're looking at 3 million, maybe 2.8 million dollars. In the grand scheme of things, that's peanuts. Absolutely peanuts. And you know, they, they might have a system where they pay the boring company 300,000 a month and it's paid over time. So that when they're, as they're actually using it, they're getting the value out of it and they're paying the Boeing company at the same time. They've not had to shoot. But in the grand scheme of things, $3 million is like a packet of crisps for the Tesla. For, for Tesla. Uh, also, based on the timing of the project, it sounds like the tunnel came first, or at least the idea to have a tunnel came first. How would he know that? Um, he didn't. Um, at least the idea to have a tunnel at Giga Texas came first before they knew what it would be used. No, no, no. I don't know how he, what did it sound like, Fred? What 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 sounded like it, it came first? Nothing. It's just in your head, Fred. You need to get more sleep and eat more vegetables. Something's wrong. Uh, with the two underpasses linking both sides of the Tesla property, they're like way away. You, you know, it adds another two or three minutes onto the overall journey. You don't need that when you've got a very long production line and potentially delays at the end. You want things done as quickly as possible. It looks like they had to dig deep to find a use for it. I, I, I don't think so, mate. Uh, to me, it looks like Elon is sending money from Tesla, which is publicly owned and under his control, 
with little to no board oversight, which is absolute horse crap again. The board has plenty of oversight. It's an impartial board. It, to his privately owned venture, the Boeing Company. So again, he spends all day writing silly articles like this, making you know you know these unfair, unsubstantiated rumours, and it's a lot of rubbish. This particular tunnel will be very very well used. It will be a significant component in the factory, and people will enjoy using it, and it will provide value to Tesla shareholders. So, um, Fred, his opinions are not uh, are not required basically. If it's such a big deal for Fred, he should sell his shares. That's that's my opinion. Sell your shares, Fred. Go buy Rivian shares. You know, go buy Ford or GM. If you you're unhappy, if, if that is your honest opinion, what you've just said there, then you should sell your shares because you you should be worried. But you're not. You're just starting rumors. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to the video. Um, that would be very helpful. Comment on the video as well. Tell me what you think about the overall technology that the Boeing company is developing. Tell me what you think about potentially what Proofwalk 4 and Proofwalk 5 will do. Um, tell me about things that you believe need to happen to make the, the whole process more, um, more efficient in terms of setting up the machine and also disassembling it at the end. Uh, continue supporting me on these things if you've not already done so. And as always, everything in this room has been funded by these Patreons these incredible people made this channel and I'm always very, very thankful for that, guys. So please continue supporting me. Thank you. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. And remember, don't be boring. See you on the next one. Take care now. Hail to the king, baby. When I want a scene dinner. And with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. <laughs>